Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at something that I am asked often enough that it really kind of surprises me. And that is, how do I select and set up the best iPhone for low vision? Now, for me, I'm legally blind. I set it up one way. But there are a lot of my friends out there that ask me questions about low vision problems that are coming to terms with age-related vision loss, which I understand. I kind of experienced that 20 years before I should have, you know, with my macular degeneration, but needless to say, we all have low vision or somebody that we know has low vision that may be struggling with how to use a smartphone. Now, whether you use an iPhone, which is what I use, or an Android phone, some of the basic things are all the same. One, we need to establish a realistic goal as to what our visually impaired person wants out of a smartphone. Do they just want to be able to make and receive phone calls? After all, a cell phone is basically a phone, right? Then there are those of us that want to be able to do all the other stuff, whether it's social media or texting or emails. So knowing what your goals are and how you plan on using the device goes a long way to selecting what the proper one is. And we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail. So if this sounds good to you, sound like something you can get behind, check this out. Hi there. Welcome to the channel. As we said earlier, this is the Legally Blind Geek YouTube channel. My name is Mike, and we are going to talk about selecting and setting up an iPhone or any smartphone for that matter for somebody with low vision. And one of the first things that we need to come to terms with when we're setting up any of these devices, adaptive technology and so forth, for someone with a visual impairment is establishing what their goals are and sometimes being able to establish what the goals are we need to get into a little bit about what our capabilities are such as myself i'm i'm legally blind so i use the iphone 14 pro max is the one that i have right now and part of what had me wanting to do this is people ask me how i set my phone up and how i select a phone for somebody with my eye condition. You know, being legally blind is one of those kind of things where if I look at the screen, I can't really recognize it all that well. Now I have come up with some uh, workarounds that work for me. It's like, um, sometimes I can try this little magnifier. I just throw it up to my eye, I can throw it up to the screen and I can see what's on the phone. Now, this is just one of those little added devices that as we start establishing what our goals are, and we start trying to come up with works around hacks, if you will, for low vision problems, that's one solution. If that is the first step for somebody that's got, you know, low vision, say like somebody that's starting to come to terms with low vision due to age-related vision loss, a little magnifier like that might be just fine. If that works for you, fantastic. Then you might want to come up with a workaround on the current smartphone that you have, like go in and set up a larger text or come up with a bold text or go into you know, accessibility settings and work through that. For others like myself, I rely on spoken content is one of the voiceover settings or I'll have voiceover where I can turn it on and off, you know, read selected text and those kinds of things. Or if I just were to pick up my phone right now and I tap on the screen, it's going to tell me what the time is because that's what's on the home screen. If I swipe up, Face ID. Weather. Newberg. 93 degrees Fahrenheit. it just talks, tells me all that stuff. It's at the top of the page and it'll read down. I just the way I have it set up. Now, there are situations when that doesn't work. Okay. We're getting into goals and needs again. And there are certain situations where I have to have my, um, where do they go? Oh, uh, huh. my AirPods 
I just did get the AirPod Pro 2. I had the AirPods Pro from when they first came out. Worked pretty good. But the AirPods 2 worked much better. Hush. You fix that right now. So I've got my accessibility shortcut set up on her side side button here. I go one, two, three. Alert. Accessibility shortcuts. Accessibility shortcuts come up. I just go ahead and select it. Voice over. Voice over off. Turn voice over off. So now we're not going to hear it talking in the background. This is one of the ways that I use my iPhone. This way that I've got my iPhone set up. Now I'm sure there are ways you can do that with an Android phone. But to be quite honest with you, I got away from Android phones in 2006, 2007, somewhere in there. The old flip phone that I had didn't have the accessibility features that Apple did have. And I was introduced to the iPhone when I went to the Heinz Blind Rehab Center in Chicago, Illinois. It's part of the VA system. And I was introduced to Apple devices and I made the transition from Windows and Android based devices to the Apple ecosystem, which is why I am an Apple fan. I had to learn my Apple brain, but once I got involved in the ecosystem and I saw how everything worked together, and that's one of the things that you need to consider when you're setting goals for yourself. My family all except for my oldest son, are Apple people. We have MacBook Pros, we have iMacs, we have iPads, we have iPhones, and we've got them all connected. And the family just seems to be able to communicate better that way. You know, we use, we have the voice assistant set up so we can just say that buzzword and give it direction, call this, call that, whatever, and my iPhone, my iPad, they all will recognize my voice. They'll recognize what the command is and off we go. I have evolved into using the smartphone just for just about everything. As a matter of fact, right now I am recording this video using my older iPhone XS Max. I've got my 14 right here that I use for all my communications needs. And I even have, this is just touting Apple devices for a minute. I've also got a, an iPhone 7 Plus that I had back when the iPhone 7 first came out that I use it for all of my um, audio books. Bard Mobile, download something from Amazon, download something from Apple Books. I have them all loaded up on that phone so I can just plug in the AirPods. I can stick it in my pocket and I use it as a, you know, e-reader, I guess you could say. So these iPhones and all these smartphones are capable of doing a lot of things that many folks take for granted or don't really understand. This is why we need to discuss with ourselves or our loved one. And if you're the caregiver, or if you're the sighted guide for somebody that's just newly blind, legally blind or dark blind, this will help you as well. Help you to understand how a visually impaired person, one, needs to establish their goals and how to kind of work through that. Say, well, what do I need to do with this? After using a smartphone for, let's just say 20 years, okay, just for discussion purposes, I started out not knowing much about technology. I'm, I'm, I didn't grow up with this kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, when I was a young man growing up in the farmland of Southern Indiana, I can remember my mom and dad having a party line. Who knows what a party line is? If you do, put that in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about a party line and what your experiences are with one. If you don't, okay, you don't. But anyway, we went from the old landline, as the party line, to, gosh, when we moved up in the world, we had a private line. And then after I went to the military, came back in the 80s, and, you know, the bag phones and stuff like that came out. So, yeah, I'm dating myself now, but this is a little bit of history. Some of us older guys and, and ladies that haven't come to terms with age-related vision loss. You know, I talked to my sister 
well, a few days ago before the recording of this video, and she was uh, celebrating her 60th birthday, which uh, things have changed a lot. And we get caught up in the conversation. I'm bloviating here, but I hope you'll just bear with me. We, we, we were talking about, gosh, as much as things changed in our lifetime, and we're still probably got 20 or so years left to live, hopefully. Who knows? The world could come to an end tomorrow. You just never know. Anyhow, I wonder how much things are going to change in the next 50 or 60 years for the next generation. You got some suggestions, some ideas, some thoughts? Share us with us in the comment section down below. I'd, be, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I use the dark background for the contrast. Okay, I haven't set journaling up yet, but I just wanted to show you that I have it set for that text and that size. I don't know if the, if the reflection of the glare of the lights are going to be able to let you see that or not. But that with a magnifier, I can see to read what's on the screen. And um, I have a couple of different little options here. You saw the other one, but this is this is my go-to. I can just hold it to my eye and hold it to the screen and I can start journaling. I can, I can read that. Now when that comes in handy is when I am out and about and the environment around me is too loud. You can't really hear what's going on and I'm out too long and I don't want to have my AirPods in my ears because the battery life on these things is, is better on the Pro 2, but still yet, you can't wear them all day unless you take one, put it in one ear, leave the other ear open, which you can do that. It doesn't really work that well for me. I just soon close them up, put them in my pocket, set up the larger bold text or the, just the larger text so I can use a magnifier to see what's on the screen. That may work well for you. Switcher, journal, back home, find my image, alert, accessibility selected. Voice so alert. that all goes along with the size form factor. How big a phone are you going to need? Are you going to want? I have larger than average hands, so I don't have any problems. I can put my thumb across the screen. I can use the larger phone all day long and it doesn't hurt me at all. Now for my wife who has half the hands that I've got, she likes it for the big screen because she gets more text on there when she's doing her audio books or just her books on her computer that she, or on the phone, excuse me. The thing is a computer. What am I kidding myself? You just hold it in your hand. But it'll do everything my laptop will do. So when she gets all of her books, she downloads them onto her app, whether it's Kindle app or whatever. And she sits there and she reads on her phone or she reads on her iPad, the larger screen is a lot easier for her to put in her purse on the iPhone, carry it around. Make sense? So form factor, things to consider when we're establishing our goals, what size fits in your hand, what size fits in the pocket, workarounds. If you don't want to use voiceover, you can use a magnifier. If you can't have the magnifier all the time, or if you just need the text to be larger or a different font so you can see it and read it, you can go into your settings on your smartphone and set them up that way. So that's kind of like size capabilities. I know a lot of folks, they want to save some money and they want to get the cheapest phone that they can. I understand that because I'm not made of money either, okay? But we want to establish our goals and our realistic goals and our capabilities that we're going to be able to use our device for and then shop accordingly or select the proper device accordingly. If you need something with a bigger screen, get the bigger screen. It doesn't have to be the latest and the greatest model. You can get you know, iPhones, like I said, I've got a 7 Plus that works well for audiobooks. I've got the 10s Max that right now is recording this video. So if you're going to be somebody that wants to do a lot of photography, videos, and those kinds of things, you're probably going to want to get an iPhone or a smartphone for that matter with a larger internal storage, simply because they're easier. Okay, 
A lot of the phones that you get today, if you get like a 15 Pro or Pro Max or whatever, it's got the USB-C, you can put your external hard drive on there and you can record in ProRes and all that kind of stuff. But get a little bit off in the weeds, I know, but if that's the kind of stuff that you want to do, even with low vision, you can do that. These devices will allow you to do that. And if you're going to be doing video or some of those kinds of things, or you're going to have a lot of large files, you're probably going to want something that's got, you know, 256 gig, 512 gig. I don't know that one terabyte is really what, that's a limited, that's a very few people that need anything that big. Okay. But don't just base your purchasing decision on price alone. Establish what your goals are going to be, what you need a phone to be able to do, what the capabilities of it needs to be, and then shop around for the best deal. You, you can go on, a lot of times you can go to Amazon and you can buy a, I don't know, refurbished we'll call it, and get an older phone with all the storage that you need and save a lot of money and they're very useful. They'll do everything that we need them to do, okay? So those are options that you might want to consider. Now, once you've gone through, you've established your goals, you've come up with, okay, this is the bare bones that I'm going to need. I'm going to need a small phone because of my hands. I'm going to need a plus size because I want the bigger screen real estate so I can make the text larger and be able to see it better with my eyes and not have to rely on voiceover or spoken content or any of those kind of things. That's what you select, okay? If you're not going to use a camera, cameras don't mean a whole heck of a lot to you, or if you take any pictures at all, it's just going to be at the grandkids at a birthday party or something like that. Any camera on any of these iPhones or Androids are going to be good enough for that. So you don't need to pay a lot of attention to that. Now, if you're going to have several thousand photographs, and believe me, grandparents and parents, or even kids for that matter, that like to take pictures of stuff just so they remember it or take pictures of stuff for reference, you can get several thousand photos on your phone pretty quick. So don't be surprised if that happens. Okay, what do you think? You get a better idea as to how to go about selecting the best iPhone, or maybe I should say the best smartphone, whether it's Apple. I just near and dear to my heart. I really like Apple. First of all, for me, I like that whole ecosystem. But you may not. Your family may not. You may be Android people. If that's the case, hopefully this information will give you a place to start as to how to select the proper smartphone that will fill your communication needs. And before I forget, I want you to check out this link right here so you can get some more information on how to set up an iPhone or an iPad for somebody with visually impaired. You like this information? Consider giving us a thumbs up. Share it with somebody that you know that could benefit from it. You might want to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that we post in the past or in the future. Sound good? Thanks again. Catch you in the next one. Bye. Oh, don't forget, watch this video right here. You'll love it. I know you will. Thanks. Bye.